Okay, now that we have our two uh, routers uh, populated with network module serial cards, uh, the next thing we're going to do is um, we're going to design just our uh, network real fast. We're going to create the link in between them. So to add a link, you just click on this button here. It says add a link. Just click on that and we're going to create the serial interface in between them. So we're going to click on serial and left click on router 0. And then left click again on router 1 to complete the link. And to to get out of the, this mode, you just click on this X here. Alright, now I have the link created in between the routers. Now I want to show you here over here on the right, we have the topology summary. If we um, click on the pluses, we're going to get... Um, it's going to show us um, how the routers are connected to each other and through what uh, interfaces. Uh, both routers are using serial 00 to connect to each other, so that makes it easy for us to remember. Um, so next, what we want to do is... Uh, we want to create... I guess what we're going to do next here is... We'll bring up our CPU... Our task manager... So we can monitor, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on the routers, and I'm just going to show you um, how the CPU utilization will jump once you start the routers, and, and so on. So we're going to start router 0 one, uh, uh, first. We're going to, usually you just want to start one router at a time. Uh, so I'm just going to left click on router 0 to highlight it, and then right click it, and then click on start you'll see right away the CPU utilization jumped about 40%. Uh, this computer I'm on has 2 gigs of uh, memory. Uh, it all depends on the, uh, you know, your computer specifications. Uh, usually you want it to, to run GNS3 on a computer that has at least the minimum amount of 1 gig of memory. So if we right-click on the router now and go to console, you'll see that it takes us to the router prompt, just like we're sitting at a real router. And you also see that our CPU utilization has dropped back down. Um, if your CPU utilization doesn't drop back down, uh, which it probably won't, if you haven't set the idle PC value for those your routers before, um, what you'll have to do is right click on the router and go, go to uh, idle PC, left click on it, um, I'm going to calculate a new one anyway, even though I have an idle PC value. I'm going to show you how to to uh, to run through this. Uh, so you'll see here it's going to calculate when the router. You want to wait until your router is idle when there's nothing going on with your router to do to calculate your idle PC value. Now you're going to want to click from, or you're going to want to select from this drop-down box. Uh, the selection with the asterisk next to it. That's the best idle PC value that GNS3 has calculated for the router. So in this case, it's number two. It's got the asterisk next to it. I'm going to click on it and click OK. And you'll see the idle, you know, you see your CPU utilization jump back down to where it was before. Um, so that's how you manage uh, setting your idle PC value inside of GNS3. Another thing you'll want to do is get into global configuration mode, then go under line console 0, because that's the console port that you're using. Whenever I right click here and click on console, I'm using line console 0. So I'm going to go into line console 0, and I'm going to set the exact timeout to never time out because if it does what will happen is um, after you know your router session has been idle for a certain amount of time it'll time out 
and what that'll do is it'll put the router into a, uh, a cycle to where the CPU utilization on this your computer will jump up and it'll stay pretty high and you don't want that to happen so and that's just with GNS3 is when this happens so we don't want that to happen so we're gonna set the, uh, the we're gonna set the uh, the console session to never time out and that's going to help keep our CPU utilization down alright so it looks like what I want to do now is just you know save the configuration here and the router and then also you want to go up here in the program and save your project. Alright, now with that done, I'm going to go ahead and hop on to router 1. And I'm going to start this router. So, I'm going to right click on it. Go to start. You'll see CPU utilization jump up again, about 40%. Right click on it, console into it. <clears throat> and it looks like the CPU utilization has dropped. So I have a good idle PC value that I already set before we got into this. I already set the idle PC value. So we're good to go. Again, if you need to set the idle PC value, what you can do is just right click on the router. Make sure you only have the one router highlighted that's indicated by the dark blue. Okay. If both of these were highlighted, they'd both be dark blue like that. You just want to highlight one at a time when you set an idle PC value. Right click on it, go to idle PC, and let it calculate your idle PC value. Remember, you want to select the uh, idle PC value from the the list box, you want the drop down box, you want to select the uh, um, the idle PC value with the asterisk next to it. And hit yes. I'm not going to do that because I don't need to with this because it's already set. Okay, here's the system config. Dialog, I do not want to uh, go into initial configuration mode, so I'm going to select no. And uh, looks like I'm ready to go here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, usually what I always do first in GNS3 when I'm in, I'm going to go under line console zero and set the no exec timeout command. And then copy. Good to go. Next thing I'll do, what I'm going to do, I didn't do on uh, router zero, I'm going to do this real fast, is uh, I'm going to uh, change the router name so I know which router I'm in. Right now I'm in router one, so I'm going to change the host name to R1. I do that under global config with the host name uh, command. And now you'll see that it's changed. change it real fast. And then save it here. 